again to everyone joining us today for our Animal Ambassador Series. With me today at the Cuga Nature Center is my friend Koosh. Today we want to teach you all about how snakes eat. Really quick disclaimer, the following footage will include our snakes capturing and consuming pre-killed prey items. We do not ever feed our snakes live prey items. Our educational mission is always to show you folks some pretty cool things about our wild animals and their natural behaviors, while also maintaining the most humane methods for both our animals and the animals that they may eat. A lot of prey items, including mice and rats, are well equipped with a lot of defense traits, like very sharp teeth and very sharp claws. These animals that they do eat could choose to defend themselves by biting or scratching. In the wild, a snake or an attacker would easily be able to run away or flee. However, if they're in an enclosure, they can't get away. And a wound that they could sustain from that live animal, like a scratch or a bite, could become infected. And this could become fatal. So for the best health and welfare of our predators, as well as the humane treatment of our prey, we choose not to feed live prey items. Please stay tuned for more of our Animal Ambassador series. Let's begin by looking at how a snake might find its prey in the wild. Since snakes have very poor eyesight and they lack ear holes, they're primarily relying on their sense of smell. Snakes do in fact have nostrils, just like we do, and they can smell or pick up scent just like we do with our nose. They also have a second backup system that they might utilize when trying to track or figure out where a prey item might be going. They do this through a behavior called tongue flicking. They flick their tongue out of their mouth and when they do this, it picks up odor molecules or little tiny pieces of scent that are so small you would need a microscope in order to see them. When their tongue is retracted or pulled back into their mouth, it touches an organ called the Jacobson's organ, two fluid-filled sacs that sit on the roof of their mouth. If they flick their tongue out and the right side of that forked tongue picks up more odor molecules, the Jacobson's organ can tell this when it is taken back into the mouth. The snake will instinctively turn its head to the right, say that it takes its tongue in and there's heavier concentration of odor molecules on the left side. It's gonna turn its head to the left side because that means the prey item is to its left. The majority of our snakes at the Cuga Nature Center actually kill by a method called constriction. This means they are non-venomous. There is a difference between poison and venom. We refer to snakes as venomous when they inject venom into their bloodstream of their prey items. A poisonous animal is an animal who needs to be ingested or eaten in order to sicken or kill its attacker. Therefore, when we talk about snakes that use venom, we call them venomous snakes and not poisonous snakes. But that's beyond the point, since we are mostly going to be looking at constrictors today. For a very long time, scientists thought that constrictor snakes suffocated or asphyxiated their prey, meaning that they captured them in a strike or a bite, and they wrapped the coils of their bodies around the prey item and gave them a really tight squeeze so that the animal could no longer take air into its lungs and it suffocated. Researchers found that the prey items were actually dying much quicker than the suffocation process would allow. They decided to do a study in 2015 of a couple boas, which have a very strong constriction pressure. What they found was that instead of suffocating their prey, once the snake got the prey item in its coils, they exuded such an amazing pressure on the body of that animal that all of the blood was directed away from the vital organs of that prey item, the brain, lungs, and heart. Without any blood flow going to the animal's brain, it quickly lost consciousness, and shortly thereafter, the heart stopped in a full cardiac arrest. We've been watching two of our constrictors, Kush, as well as our boa constrictor, Echo, try and figure out how to now eat this subdued or deceased prey item. One of the ways that a snake knows that their constriction has been successful is because they no longer feel the heartbeat of the animal in their constriction or their coils. Since snakes have very poor hearing, they mostly sense the world around them through the vibrations of very low tones, including the low tones of a mammal heartbeat or the lub-dub, lub-dub that we all might be familiar with. Once they know that the animal has expired, they're now going to find the animal's head or tail end since eating them sideways would be pretty challenging. 
Constrictors in most snakes have really amazing jaw agility, meaning that they can open their jaws and actually expand the diameter of their jaw size. They have a very flexible joint that joins the upper jaw to the lower jaw, and it allows them to open their jaw about 150 degrees. In addition, there's a very flexible ligament, kind of like a rubber band, that's in the front of their jaw piece, which means they can eat something two and a half sizes the diameter of their actual jaw size. This means that when they begin to constrict, they use a process called walking the jaw in order to put that prey item into their mouth and force it into their esophagus, or the beginning of their intestinal tract. They kind of take the right side of their jaw, both upper and lower and they move it forward. Now they can grip on to the body of the prey item because all snakes have recurved or curving backwards teeth that go along the upper and the lower jaw. This side that goes forward will grip the prey item and keep that really tight grip while the other side, the left side, can now move forward because it's not fully attached and it can put enough force on the animal's body that it can force it back towards the throat while that right side detaches and again walks forward up the prey item's body. They'll continue walking their jaws in this fashion until enough of the animal's body has reached the esophagus. Once it reaches the esophagus, there's really strong muscles similar to the muscles that we use to swallow that make a wave-like motion. They're so powerful that they can crush some of the bones inside the body of that animal in order to make it smaller and fit further down the intestinal tract of the snake. During this entire process, the snake is also exuding a lot of saliva onto the animal's body. This acts as a lubricant to allow it to slide into the intestinal tract, but it's also just loaded with these really powerful acidic digestive enzymes that begin the digestive process before that animal's body has even reached its upper intestine. The entire process is aided by the fact that a snake's heart rate, as well as its respiratory rate, will increase in order to pump all of its blood flow to go towards the lining of its intestinal tract, which expands it. As our boa constrictor here, Echo, gets closer to swallowing the small rat that he's been fed, you'll see his throat area or his upper intestine will actually expand quite a bit what it would normally look like in order to conform to the shape of that animal as he's literally swallowing it whole. You also might notice on Echo a small tube at the base of his mouth. This is his glottis, or a breathing tube, that leads directly to his lungs. It actually moves out and in front of the body of the animal so that the snake can still take in air while it's swallowing. Once they've swallowed and that body has gone down into through the esophagus and into the upper intestine, they'll make a yawn-like gesture, and this is the final phase of the feeding mode. This is just a big realignment of those upper and lower portions of the jaw so that when they close their mouth again, everything is realigned and nothing looks odd. We hope you enjoyed our video today. Please stay tuned for future animal ambassador and videos from the Cuga Nature Center and myself, Dana Jorgensen, the director of Live Animals.